This is Sprite. He is a 1999 registered Tennessee walking horse. He was bred in Tennessee and we bought him in 2005 from my cousin Kara. Well, 2004 because he was five. Um, Sprite was used as a competition horse. He was not sword, he was flat chewed. Um, come on, come on. Sprite in 2009, Sprite came down with laminitis. He, uh, one morning we walked down and he was laying down in his stall. And he, while he does do that sometimes, he was laying down for um, an inappropriate amount of time and in weird places, like out in the middle of the pasture, surrounded by horses, which he doesn't usually do. And we could sense he was in pain. He was showing other symptoms. His feet were hot. He didn't want to walk. He didn't want to be ridden. He was still eating fine and all this stuff. So our farrier came out. And while we had been warned the previous time that he was gaining way too much weight from our lush grass in our pasture, um, we were like, oh, you know, nothing really bad will happen. We cut him back a little bit, but he still was way too excessive in weight. So the next time our farrier came out, which happened to be the next day after we saw all those signs, um, he said Sprite had laminitis. He had what we call grass founder. Even though it was not full founder, it was just an acute um, case of laminitis. So um, we will show you how we were taught to treat Sprite in just a second. Um, first, let's go on up to the house and make our sugar and betadine concoction. So now we're going to start preparing for our hoof pack. We need diapers, and Sprite is a size 2. He's a baby. Uh, we're going to need pure cane sugar. You're going to need betadine. Here are our diapers already out. You're going to need scissors, socks measuring cups, duct tape, and I've already made our mixture. We're going to put roughly one part betadine to three parts sugar, and what you're going to make is peanut butter. So I've already mixed our mixture. Looks like this. It's a little bit of runny peanut butter, but you want it to be able to pack into the hoof, so you need it a little bit liquidy. What we're going to do is we're going to roll our socks top out so they can later go on his hoof. <clears throat> I'm going to roll it right up to the toe so they're easier to roll on onto his hoof after we start packing it. Do the same with the other one. To the toe. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a pad of duct tape. This will act as a moisture barrier and also as a wear barrier for the hoof packing. You want to make this pretty thick and you want it to be the length of the um, foot so that it covers the foot and rolls up on the sides of the We're going to make this roughly four pieces wide with overlapping them slightly as we go so they don't separate. And it's easier to make this in the house because there's not as much dust in the house and so the duct tape keeps its stickiness and then we're going to go four the same way in a T shape so that the middle pad is the thickest and that's going to go on the bottom of the hoof to make sure there's no wearing through and seeping of the sugar dye. Pull this up, and when you pull this up, you have to be sure that it doesn't stick to itself. 
That's a major problem. You'll never get them undone, but they do. All right. So when you get down to the barn, I'll show you this, but I will prep you up here. You're gonna take the diaper, open it up. We have Shrek diapers, Sprite's favorite movie. You're gonna open the diaper up and put it on the hook, and you're gonna lay it right on the T, so this bottom part is the bottom of their hook. All right, let's head back up to the barn. First, what we're gonna do is pick up his hook. Come on, Sprite. Right. Then we're gonna make sure the hook is clean. As clean as we can get it. Then what we're going to do is take our paste that is now thicker since it's been sitting a little bit and pack it into this hook. Once you get it all on the saw and then the sulcuses, you're going to take your diaper and you're going to open it up and put it on top of the hoof like this, catching it all. I want the horse to put the hoof down and secure it. Oh. And you can not really get a diaper too tight, but you can secure it as tight as you can get it around the front. Want to make sure you can get your finger in there. That's fine. Then you're going to pick the foot back up, get your sock ready. Move that out of the way. Dude, there we go. Sometimes it's easier to hold the foot between your legs. Get the sock on there as much as you can, and then start rolling it over. This is a real small sock. Okay, let me unroll it a couple times. Okay, get it over. Something you can work it on. Get it over the heel bulbs. Take it back out and just roll it off. And this way, this takes away your need for vet wrap. You can put, get it as well on there as you can get, and just roll it up. Good boy, so to put back down, you're gonna go grab your pad of duct tape. One more time, bud, come on. And very carefully, you're going to set the thickest part over the toe and wrap it over and over, making sure not to get it too tight. Oh, my hand's in there now. There we go. Wrap it over. Wrapping it around. like so and you will make sure you can get your finger in there feel around it's not too tight you can wrap this back over so that it doesn't stick anywhere anywhere you see sock what you're gonna do I don't have the duct tape on me I'm gonna go grab that and we're gonna rewrap anywhere you can see sock Okay, now I got my duct tape back. We're gonna wrap anywhere we can see. Just wrap around low, making sure those heel bolts are covered. There we go. And then, because we wrapped around the toe, we'll pick this up one more time. Well. Put it between my legs and 
give him a couple good passes right around the toe. Horses are going to walk, even though they hurt some. And I want them as covered as we can get them. So this boot does not come off. Just like that. It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it sure works. Good boy. Do it, and we're going to use vet wrap rather than a sock. Don't eat my hook stick. Get out as much as we can. And a horse that currently has laminitis will probably, if they have it in both feet, will not really want to pick up one of their feet and will be standing out in a pressure relieving position and might not want to give you their hoof as much and as long as a normal horse. So keep that in mind and work as fast as you can. We're going to get as much of this as we can on here. And we want it all over the sole and over the frog. And what this, what Sugar Dine does is it starts tissue growth to make thicker soles and thicker skin over any sort of bruising or cuts and scrapes. Oh, okay. What I'm going to do now is grab my diaper. Oh God, we're spilling. Easy boy. And I just rake that back on there like that didn't happen. Get a little bit more. Plunk that sucker on there. Hold it up real high. And slap a diaper on there. Make sure the edges are covered. And let him put his foot down. Put that a little bit backwards, but that's fine. Come on over here, grab this corner. You can see these diapers fit the hoof real well. They, the back comes up a little high and they cover everything of the hoof. Next what we're gonna do is grab our vet wrap, slide the messy stuff out of the way. Take his foot back up. Come on, come on. I know, come on, come on. Easy. You're gonna be too far. Sprite. Alright. Come on up. Come on up. Pick him up. Good boy. Gonna start wide and go around. It's probably the opposite of the way I want to do it. Here we go. Here we go. Another pass up near the cornet band. Don't want to be too tight on that. Always want to be able to put a finger under it. Wrap over again. Come on up over the toe. And do that as many times as you can. Cover this. Go back over this heel bulb. Come on over again. Come over here. You're gonna do this as much as your vet wrap will allow. I think this is the last pass I'm gonna be able to take. And ideally, you wanna end at the bottom so that the weight of the horse holds the vet wrap tight and stuck to itself. Mine was a little long there. That's all right, that'll work. Then what we're gonna do is take our duct tape, which will take me a second to get off. Ooh, good boy. Come on. Sprite's a little bit older. 
So picking up this side of his body is a little bit harder because he's got a little bit of arthritis. That's okay, we still love him. So we're gonna cover the toe with the thickest part and put all of that on here. And then any part where we have any red, we're gonna take our duct tape. Right, he's moved a little bit from our general area. It's a little bit harder to reach things. And we will start wrap. Good boy. We'll make long passes over one of the hoof, making sure not to get too tight. Uh, cutting our duct tape a little bit make another pass and you have to be a little bit more careful with this one than with the sock method because you do not want to get anything on the hair the sock provides oh god we'll put our leg down provides a little bit more protection easy than our vet wrap did so you want to make sure we don't get any of this hair and we can always get our finger up under here, which we can. That's fine. Got our finger all up in here. All the way around. Yep. And anywhere you make a mistake, you can always just cut that part off. Start again. We're going to make one more pass this way. And see if we can wrap it under his hoof one more time. All right, Sparty. One more time, buddy. One more time. There we go. And just wrap that under. Make sure you have a real thick piece up on here so they don't wear through. Got protection everywhere. You can always get your finger through. Easy. Good boy. All right. As you can see, we wrapped both ways. I personally prefer this one. And as you can see, I definitely wrapped this one better. Right, Sprite? Uh, Sprite, we wrapped his feet every day for about two three weeks and then when he was feeling a little bit better he didn't have as many signs of um, pain and weakness in his soles we moved on to the outlaw shoes which i described later and uh, could have robbed a bank with this guy but we didn't <laughs> and long term um, we decided not to let him eat as much grass so we put him up a little bit earlier in the summertime in the stall that is at night and then Whenever he's outside, because we don't have any dry lots, this becomes his new best friend. This is a grazing muzzle, and as you can see, he doesn't really like it. Um, and the way we do it is, in order to make them like it a little bit more, we'll put two treats in the bottom, very low calorie treats, and they always stick their face in there and always want those treats. He wants them right now, but uh, Sprite will probably live the rest of his life as long as he's here with this grazing muzzle on when he's out in the summer. And in the winter, when we personally don't have as much grass, we do not make him wear it. But uh, as long as we have some grass, he'll definitely be wearing it. Right, buddy? And he has not had any bouts uh, or signs of anything, a recurrent laminitis at all in the past 10, almost 10 years. Yes. And so we think we've got him on a well-managed um, diet and control program. And as much as he loves snacking and licking and all this stuff, he uh, is a pretty healthy guy overall, and though we have did have that one bout of laminitis, he's been pretty healthy overall, and we're always happy to have him. Thank you for watching.